Hello everyone, I'm Jan Mark Valhue, the Chief Investment Officer at Claire Invest. Today I'd like to speak about the geopolitical implications of four different fronts affecting the world. We already have an ongoing conflict going on between Ukraine and Russia. We now have conflict taking place between Hamas and Israel. In the continuation, we have in, in Yemen another front opening up that's a little bit more problematic where the Houthis have uh, starting to tease the uh, Red Sea shipping channel where they are trying to slow down the traffic and actually they're succeeding in diverting traffic around the world. And as you can see from the graph over here, they are actually, their implications are that the Suez Canal is no longer viable because there's a lot of attacks and missiles and now also the US and the UK are bombing uh, Yemen so there's a risk that the conflict can extend to other countries around the area and just uh, two days ago uh, there was another front opening up between Pakistan and Iran. So the route between Swiss Canal is now pretty much closed. All the shipping lines, shipping containers, and even oil ships are diverting the fleet and they have to go through the uh, Cape of Good Hope in South Africa, the tip end of the world. That's increasing almost by 40% uh, percent the length of the traffic and thus the prices of the shipping goods. And so these factors are going to, in the long run, increase inflation, potentially increase the oil prices, and in turn, change the dynamics of the uh, interest rate cuts that are priced in the market. The um, most investors and market players have been pretty dovish on future activity of the Fed and the market is currently pricing, as we can see from this, about six cuts this year. And we think that's very optimistic. That will bring the uh, Fed funds rate from 425 currently to about uh, 4%. And uh, that to us seems a bit uh, optimistic as uh, inflation is still hovering around 3.4%. As we can see, we came down from 10%, which is a good thing, but now we're still at 3.4%. And the fact that the uh, supply chain will be disrupted, that will increase inflation, that could increase the oil prices over the long term. We were lucky so far on oil prices that China economic recovery was a disaster and uh, they are not able to get back to par and they've been dealing with a lot of issues. But the emerging markets, uh, India and other countries around China have already started to recover. And if China starts again, their economic expansion after almost two or three years of downturn, then that could ignite price expansion on the oils, oil around the world. So I think the idea that the Fed will cut right away is a bit uh, over optimistic. And we think that the Fed will have to wait and see where the inflation fall or stabilizes before they talk about any cuts. In addition, equity markets have been really running really hot with a lot of speculation. And we think that uh, the Fed doesn't want to overextend the move in equities. And if they start cutting rates, that will be uh, very bullish for uh, equities. And that's actually what they're trying to prevent because they need to slow down the general economic activity so that the uh, prices fall and we have a little bit of deflation, which we did uh, start to have at the end of last year. It's not sufficient for the Fed to stop and start cutting right away. So if we see from the uh, first impact of the, the, the Red Sea that started about in the, at the end of Q3, we already see traffic falling by 36% in Q4. And I think that's supposed that will go even higher in the months uh, ahead. As you can see, from this graph, we have the shipping prices for China, and you can see that we have almost a doubling of fees, so a 76% increase in, uh, in the rates of uh, shipping boxes or containers around the world. And that will translate in probably delays at the factory level, where companies won't have the parts to, to build the products, a little bit like we had during COVID. We are back to the same issues we had during COVID, and uh, that will in turn turn prices at least shortly to the upside. Now, God forbid the situation, the geopolitical situation spreads to other countries and that will have a, that could have a, uh, even more impact. But at this, at this point, I think that's fairly enough uh, geopolitical uh, uh, events, but there's no ending sight. I mean, 
the uh, infighting is ongoing and when you have the UK and the US striking Yemen or the, uh, the Houthi rebels, it could turn very nasty really fast, especially when you have Iran in the area, which is always looking for a, a fight. So in essence, main uh, topic of the day is that, that all these factors will contribute to a increase in the prices of oil going forward, the end of a uh, deflationary period for inflation, where inflation will stabilize and start to rise again. And therefore, central banks uh, around the world, especially the Fed and the ECB in Europe, will have to uh, put on hold their rate cur cutting and they will have to move it forward. The market is currently pricing at the first cuts to appear in March and already there's been a pushback from the ECB saying they will have to wait at least until the summer uh, before they decide to, to make any change, changes to the policy. Actually, there's a third uh, possibility. Currently, the uh, Panama Canal is not working at full capacity. It's lacking water in the waterway. And so ships, the big ships, cannot cross the Panama Canal. And that could also increase uh, the shipping time and uh, the ships will have to go around uh, South America. So that's also extending the length and the prices of uh, shipping goods around the world. Thank you for listening and we'll see you again next time.